Let's take a look at some examples um, involving using the properties of logarithms. And this first one, log of the cube root of x to the fifth. Um, we're going to first rewrite this. So we can rewrite the radical using a rational exponent. And so we find that this statement's equivalent to log of x to the 5 thirds. Recall the property of rational exponent says x to the a over b um, is equal to the bth root of x to the a. And the a could be in one of two places. So under the radical or outside of it. So let's continue with this problem. Now we're going to use the power rule. Uh, and so recall the power rule says that log base b of m to the n is equal to n times log base b of m. So we're going to bring the exponent to the front so it'll become a product instead. 5 thirds will be the coefficient. And we see that this is equal to 5 thirds times log of x. So number two, we're going to expand. Um, and here is a product in the argument. Log base 2 of 16 times x squared times y. So we'll first start with the product rule, which says log base b of m times n is equal to log base b of m plus log base b of n. So we will break up this argument and we're going to create three separate logarithms. So the first is log base 2 of 16 and then plus log base 2 of x squared plus log base 2 of y. Okay, we're going to try to simplify if possible and to expand further we're going to use um, the power rule if necessary. So log base 2 of 16 is 4 2 log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y. Okay, and number 3, the natural log of 5e squared over x. Okay, we're going to use the product and quotient rule. Notice the argument has multiplication uh, in the numerator and then division, so division by x. So we're going to start with the quotient rule. And recall that it says log base b of m over n is equal to log base b of m minus log base b of n. So in our case, we have natural log of 5e squared minus natural log of x. Now we're going to use the product rule. So natural log of 5e squared can be broken up into the sum of two logarithms, natural log of 5 and natural log of e squared. Okay, so we have natural log of 5 plus natural log of e squared minus natural log of x. And lastly, we just see if any thing can be simplified more um, and use the power rule if needed. But natural log of e squared, recall that the base of natural log is e. And so remember, when the bases match, the answer is just 2, whatever the exponent is. So this gives us natural log of 5 plus 2 minus natural log of x. If we're condensing, we want to write the logarithmic expression using one logarithm. And so the first thing, we're kind of going to go backwards in terms of the properties that we use. And so typically to expand, we wait um, until lastly to use the power rule. We're going to use it first in this case. So we find that 2 log x plus 3 log y is equivalent to log of x squared plus log of y to the third. Okay, now we notice that we have a sum of two logarithms with the same base. And so we can use the product rule to combine them. So that would give us log of 
x squared times y cubed. This cannot be simplified any further, so this is our answer. And number two, log base three of x squared minus 25 minus two log base three of x plus five. Again, start with the power rule, raise x plus five to the second power. So we have log base three of x squared minus 25 minus log base three of x plus five squared. Okay, at this point I realize that we can use the quotient rule because we have the difference of two logarithms that have the same base. Okay, and upon doing so, we divide the arguments. So x squared minus 25 over x plus 5 squared. And at this point we see if we can simplify. And if we factor the numerator, we get x minus 5 times x plus 5. It's a difference of two squares. And in the denominator, x plus 5 squared um, is x plus 5 times x plus 5. But if you notice, we can just cancel one of these x plus 5s. And so we're left with log base 3 of x minus 5 over x plus 5. And let's take a look at some numerical examples, see if we can simplify these by hand. Number one, log base two of one eighth minus four times log base two of two. So if you recognize that raising two to a negative exponent would produce one eighth, so two to some power is equal to one eighth. Okay, well we know two to the third is equal to eight, and one eighth is the reciprocal of eight. So that must mean that two to the negative third is equal to one eighth. Okay, so altogether, this first logarithm is equal to negative three. Another option though, if you have forgotten about our negative exponents, we could have used the quotient rule to rewrite log base two of one eighth as log base two of one minus log base two of 8. And log base 2 of 1 is 0, and then minus log base 2 of 8, which is 3, and so 0 minus 3 is also negative 3. Okay, so let's bring down that minus 4, and log base 2 of 2 is just 1, so we have negative 3 minus 4 times 1, or negative 3 minus 4, which is negative 7. Okay, our next um, logarithm number 2 log base 4 of 32. Why don't we say that this equals some number x and rewrite this in exponential form. So 4 to the x is equal to 32. Each side of the equation can be written as a power with the same base. So we're going to use a base of 2. So 4 is 2 squared and don't forget to bring down the x and 32 is 2 to the fifth. And now, using that one-to-one -one property, if the bases of the powers are equal, the exponents have to be equal as well. And so if 2x is equal to 5, then x is equal to 5 halves, or 2.5. Altogether, we can rewrite this logarithmic statement as log base 4 of 32 is equal to 5 halves.